something about the movie, but uh, they, they saw it, so uh, uh, I, I got no cliffhangers or surprises. <laughs> Carson's really alive. Est-ce que vous avez quelques questions pour Chris Colton? Chris, I want to thank you because I I recognize myself in this movie because I, I ate my town too. My <laughs> I ate the people of my town too. Hello. And uh, well, I want to ask um, if it was hard for you to turn your your first movie and how it was uh, to have all these people for you uh, ready to to have a to order of you or of what you want uh, sorry if it's not clear i'm sorry donc je voulais demander à chris s'il trouvait ça difficile de devoir prendre une certaine position de voir un peu pour ce film et de devoir it was terrifying. Um, it, it still is. Um, and this is like the, oh gosh, it must be like the eighth uh, premiere type um, situation we've been in with. with, with. Terrifying, Jack, because not only can people, uh, you know, uh, hate my performance, they can also hate the writing. I mean, every, everything anyone says is, is my fault. <laughs> so, um, no, it, it's terrifying, and, and it, I think it'll always be terrifying, but um, I, I just hope everyone here liked it. Le produit final parce que en quelque sorte si les gens l'aiment pas il a l'impression que c'est sa faute parce que il a il a écrit le scénario il a joué dedans et donc c'est beaucoup de pression pour lui et même après cette huitième type de avant première il a il a encore peur des réactions des gens. No. no. Oh, sorry. Um, Gaiman's law states that, uh, as in Neil Gaiman, uh, it states that any author of his or her book uh, would open up the book to a random page and find the one title. So, yeah, my question is, have you fallen victim to Gaiman's law, and uh, has your experience been with editing your books and your screenplay? Okay, pose a question on the... Loi de Gaiman qui explique que quand un auteur ouvre son livre pour la première fois, la faute qu'il y a sur la page, puisqu'il y a tout le temps des petites fautes, et elle demande si Chris Colfer est tombé sous cette loi de Gaiman et comment il a réagi avec ce livre. Um, uh, <laughs> um, I was unaware that I had dyslexia. Um, until one of my friends just proofread for me, and I thought there'd be three or four times. Three or four thousand. Um, because I, I, usually the only time that I would have to, to, to really work on it was like three o'clock in the morning. So I'm not really the best, you know, mental state to. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I have like opened my books and, and, and found little typos here and there, which are not my fault. Because, <laughs> because uh, they, they, you know, they have. This. Yes, no, it's very true, very real. He was very surprised, in fact. Avec euh, le, le nombre de fautes qu'il y avait dans la première relecture, puisque il, le temps qu'il avait pour écrire ce livre ou ce scénario était euh, 3h du matin à, après le tournage. Et donc euh, il, est, il est content qu'il y ait eu des gens qui ont, ont pu le, le relire pour lui, parce que ça n'aurait pas fait un... Il a aussi euh, trouvé des petites fautes dans les livres, mais bon, il voudrait juste dire que c'est pas sa faute, parce que en principe, il y a des, des gens qui le relisent après lui. Donc. <rire> Hi. I want to say that you are an inspiration for all of us, and uh, me and my friends here. here uh, <laughs> in, touch in Paris, and uh, we would like to know if you uh, saw them in uh, YouTube on YouTube. <laughs> If you watch, uh, we made a flash mob with a glissando. Oh, I heard there 
there was someone playing a flash mob yes. though. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. 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 Right, I'll have to look it up. Someone tweeted to me. It's a flash mob. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a uh, on uh, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> It must be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Merci. Um, you're my inspiration, and I'm so emotional. So, I just want to ask you if you have and um, his way of life or relation, relations of the things. You are good writing and uh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. And I want to know the similarity between Chris and the personage of Carson, either in his way of reacting to things or in his relations with the things he has in the world, with the school, with his friends. I think Carson and I think the same, um, but I, I don't think I could ever verbally articulate what he actually says in the movie because I, I would have gotten my ass handed. Um, but and that's kind of why he was, he was so therapeutic to write about this kid that just had a sharp tongue and didn't care what he said or, or who he said to, to who. But um, I, I think everything in the film is fictional except for uh, the fact that he was a, uh, a writers' club um, president, uh, as as was I. Um, and um, and uh, Mallory is based on a, a good friend that I had in high school. But um, all the relationships and all that are are all fictional and, and my parents are terrified people are going to think that that's them. And, you know, they're, they're happily married, they still are. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's mostly fiction. So, Carson and Chris are similar in their way of thinking, but Chris would never have been able to, in his school, articulate the ideas he had, which he shared with Carson. And so, he said that it was very... It permitted to evacuate a bit of his stress in writing the answers that we all had said to all of our friends les gens qui nous tourmentent et puis on ne peut jamais le dire et Chris a dit que grâce à lui, il a exprimer ses idées que tout le monde pense au bout d'un moment et euh... Oui. Hi Sorry. <laughs> uh, congratulations for your performance on Louis, uh, I guess, uh, all about... All of us are uh, so happy to see you and uh, so to tell thank you for what you did. Do you have other projects uh, right now in the future? Always. Always. <laughs> it's just convincing other people to do them with me is the problem. <laughs> um, uh, especially like like this I movie. Here. Oh, great, great, great. How much money you got? Uh, but uh, I know because I, I tend to write things that aren't very uh, uh, um, uh, type A or, or, or original. Uh, like I mean, I died in the first scene, you know. <laughs> so uh, the project in the works. Chris travaille toujours sur quelque chose d'autre. Il adore explorer sa créativité. C'est juste une question de il faut qu'il y ait des gens qui le soutiennent après pour que ça devienne une réalité. Mais il a toujours quelque chose sur lequel il travaille. <laughs> Hi, um, so I love you so much. And, <laughs> and uh, did you think that uh, Strike by Pink would be so successful? Uh, Est-ce que Chris a, avait pu imaginer que ça serait un tel succès, uh, Strike by Lightning? Oh, uh, I got what your definition of successful is, um, because uh, I, I definitely think that's in the box office this week. <laughs> Just I'm predicting, maybe just like a few euros. Um, but um, but no, I think I think having a movie that that touches people and is about a character we don't see very often, like the, the smart of achieving kid. Um, I think I think I think just having people respond to that is is, is what makes it so successful. Ça dépend parce que vous voulez dire par euh, du succès parce que à mon avis, euh, ça serait qu'on va un peu mieux cette année. Cette semaine. Contre, ça fait du bien de voir euh, un film qui n'est pas tout à fait un film. Euh, un film général qui a un personnage un peu hors du commun, qui est intelligent, qui se pousse à ses limites, et que c'est bien de voir cette réponse positive à ce genre de film, ce genre de personnage. Um, hi, I'm here. <laughs> I 
Okay, um, I wanted to ask you uh, which has been the most difficult moment and uh, the, the happiest moment uh, time you began the whole uh, struck by Latin le plus heureux et le moment le plus difficile depuis le début de ce projet. Um, I think the, the most difficult, uh, maybe just putting it all together because I, I had so little time to to do it um, and, uh, and and finding the, the, the right people to, to do it with um, and that, that weren't after changing the story to make it be about Carson Phillips and how he lost his virginity. That was that was uh, that was tough. Um, and I I think probably just the best part has been seeing how people have responded to it and and uh, and yeah I, I think that's been this, this for sure is definitely a cherry on, on top of the cake. Donc le moment le plus difficile a été de surtout trouver quelqu'un qui n'allait pas changer la vision pour essayer de la faire plus euh, publique, générale, plus euh, normale en termes de, du cinéma, de ne pas transformer cette, euh, ce film en comment Carson a euh, fait l'amour pour la première fois. Et donc euh, Chris, je euh, trouve que ça a été très difficile de trouver quelqu'un qui, euh, qui n'allait pas changer son histoire et qui allait vraiment raconter l'histoire de Carson et de comment Carson est mort et comment il essayait d'atteindre ses rêves. Mais par contre, le moment le plus heureux, c'est tous les moments comme ceci où il voit que euh, son, son travail et le travail de tout le monde euh, a vraiment produit quelque chose de magnifique et produit quelque chose que les gens apprécient et que c'est vraiment c'est la cerise au, au dessus du gâteau tout ça. Sur le gâteau. Roberto, euh, tu es à la fois producteur euh, de ton film et en même temps tu es acteur, tu joues dedans. Est-ce que c'est pas difficile de tenir les deux casquettes, de produire le film dans lequel on joue Oui. Euh... Ouais, c'est très difficile. Et parce que... Bon... Je pense que dans cette film, euh, j'ai eu beaucoup de bol parce que j'avais des gens comme Chris et... Would you prefer me speak in English? You're gonna like, oh, hi. French? Paris? I know, right? Um, I'll say it in English because we have an amazing translator. I think you get lucky sometimes, and on this film I got very lucky that I had people like Chris and I had people like Brian Danley that...